When Lori Lucid stumbled over the rigid body of Manny Paro lying in her darkened apartment, she shut her eyes and screeched like a peregrine falcon. Concerned, she touched her nose, feeling for a beak, then felt her forearms for feathers. Nothing. Then she opened her eyes. Manny's saxophone was lying at his feet, his lips still clutching the mouthpiece. Lori looked closer. Traces of an onion bagel were clinging to the reed. Most women in her shoes, or even their own, wouldn't have noticed that. But Lori did. Scanning toward her left, she saw Manny's wide-open sax case near the door, several dollar bills scattered within its velveteen interior. Her mind reeled. Had Peril been busking in the hallway? Had her neighbors in the posh 55th floor Manhattan condo been dropping cash into his sax case? But now he was dead. Maybe it was something he played. She recalled wanting to choke him more than once when he was a mangling Misty. But let's get back to the body. After all, that's what American culture was all about on this hot day in July 2094. Violence, spectacle sports, and a fad involving dressing up your pet ferret in pink underwear. Looking back from 2540 AD, long after the intercession of the Grolnathians and the Great Transformation, it's easy to judge them, but wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get back to Manny Parrow. There he is, Lori thought. She lit a filly's cheroot and took a long drag on it, but her mind was unable to focus. Her synapses sautéed. What was she supposed to do without him? It seemed he'd always been a part of her life, guiding her, directing her, making choices for her. She tried to recall life without him and couldn't. Whatever. The body. She had to get rid of peril. Suddenly, inches behind her willowy neck, a gently soothing whisper. Is there any way I could be of service here, ma'am? Lori whirled around, then whirled again. And again, that crazy music in her head. West Side Story, whirling about the apartment like a mad thing she was now, unbridled and free, her arms spread wide, doing little Latin pirouettes over Peril's body. But I have that effect on women, especially during insertion, the instant when I download myself from the future. So let me introduce myself. My name is Legion, Legionnaires of the Transtemporal Corrections Agency. TCA's mission is preventing horrendous crimes throughout history, which is a tall order. And by tall order, I'm not talking about those mile-high McDonald's Macromax topped with ice cream and banana shards. They stopped selling those in 2465, when all 229,308 McDonald's restaurants worldwide were vaporized by order of the Grolnathians. No, I'm talking about really horrendous crimes like what happened to Peril, or World War II, Archduke Ferdinand's assassination. Justin Bieber's first record date. No, I'm talking about really horrendous crimes, like what happened to Peril, or World War II. Archduke Ferdinand's assassination. Justin Bieber's first recording date. But back to Lori, whirling like a mad thing. I tried to bring her down, joining her dance, exchanging energies, melding auras. We wound up face to face, pulsating, pumping, snapping our fingers. It was cool, real cool. Lori was staring into my eyes with a dazed look, the attraction between us skyrocketing. She slipped her arms around my vigorous waist and drew me into a long, passionate kiss. A kiss so deep I was afraid I'd get the bends if I pushed her away too fast. I could feel the nitrogen bubbles forming in my saliva. Finally, our mouths rejoined their respective faces with a loud popping sound. I took her by the hand and led her into the bedroom and sat her down on the bed. Look, lady, you, you've been through a lot. I want to help. Who are you? Where did you come from? 
That's a long story. You have to trust me for now. Did you see Manny? Did you see that awful? Don't worry about it. Maybe it was a bad dream. What do you mean? Look, like uh, he's gone. He's out of here. She looked at me disbelievingly, leaped up, and sprinted into the living room. I whipped out a stopwatch and timed her. 1.3 seconds. Impressive. He is gone, she exclaimed. The sacks, the blood, it's all gone. What did you do? I ambled out of the bedroom. Are you sure it's really happened, Miss... Uh... Lucid. Call me Lucid. I'm sure you are, but are you sure about... Manny? Of course I am. There's his case, open, with the cash inside. Oops, I'd forgotten to time transfer the Sachs case. No matter, nothing special there. But Lori was suddenly frantic. Where's the Sachs? I need it. You do? Why, exactly? For a... for a... a remembrance. For the first time since my insertion, something didn't add up. Something smelled fishy, and it wasn't a wine-poached salmon with asparagus and black truffles in Dijon butter sauce, which was too bad. I couldn't tell Lori now, but I'd sent Peril's head and body and the saxophone back a few hundred years. Some Native Americans of the Lenap tribe in what was not yet Manhattan might be looking up and wondering what that grisly apparition was floating 500 feet in the air over their teepees, but their arrows couldn't reach that high, and there were no helicopters back in the 15th century. That came later, during the French Revolution. Or was that guillotines? Too much time travel, I thought. I needed a drink. Forget the sacks, I told her. You got any Dom Perignon? I lowered myself carefully onto her French provincial sofa. There were times I've sat down through a sofa, not being fully solidified. It makes a terrible impression. Not on the sofa, on people. You lose their confidence when your molecules merge with the furniture. But tonight, no problems. What's a Don Perignon? Laurie asked. That was when the entire Folies Bergère from a 2160s Dom Perignon cyber commercial came hurtling through the wall, plastic flying everywhere. And I sent them back where they came from. I have to watch what I say sometimes. Laurie passed out when she saw the dancers, so I went into the kitchen and got two Millers out of the refrigerator. So much for posh. When I popped the tops, she started to come around. Oh, what happened? You had a relapse. What was your name again? Legion. Legionnaires. Here, have a sip of this. Wait, why did you... Why are you in my apartment? And where's Manny? Who's Manny? I came by, your door was open, and you were in here calling for help. I was? Yeah, you was, but you seem okay now. I got her going on a Miller's, and after a while she relaxed. By the third one, she was more interested in the beer's head than in perils. It's got a rich, creamy body that tickles my upper lip, she murmured. So do you, I said, moving in for another kiss. The peril caper could wait. What was your name again? She murmured. Lonnie Donovan. I was with the Yogurt Hurlers. I played lead guitar on our album, Hey Mama, Mama, Wow, I'm Drunk. But things have been tough lately. Now I order pizzas for a living. You want a pizza? Yeah, gee, excellent. She had no idea what she wanted anymore. At least that was my impression. I had a lot to learn. But I figured it was time to move on. I went to the phone and dialed a random number. Leaning Tower of Pizza? This is Lonnie. Send a pepperoni minestrone Welsh pony pizza to my current GPS location. Yeah, large, cool, bye. And 20 minutes later, I was headed across the bridge in Laurie's 2042 BMW for a visit with Peril's mother.
I could feel the hard Brooklyn streets closing in on me like the lips of a giant sea clam. I turned right at Central and drove past the YMCA. It's fun to live at the YMCA. I hear that young men can do what they want there. But I'm not a young man. I'm 280 years old, so it might not be that much fun, even though I'm in pretty good shape. I do a lot of jogging, about 10 miles on foot and another 5 miles on my hands. It's not fun, but it's better than hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. I used to do that to toughen myself up. That was the first time they took me away, but that's another story, and not a pretty one. So there I was, cruising up Central, when a motorcycle pulls up alongside. Someone slaps a magnetic device onto my passenger side door, then speeds off with a roar. I knew I had to get out of the Beamer fast. I slammed on the brakes, shoved open the door, and rolled out onto the street. I kept rolling, rolling fast, rolling under the car in the next lane, luckily missed by his onrushing wheels, rolling all the way to the curb. That's when I heard the crash and raised my head to look. The big gasoline truck behind me had crunched in a lorry's car, crushing it like an aluminum BMW, like a car made from Pepsi cans. If there was such a thing, not a bad idea, you could market it on eBay and make a killing. But I knew more trouble was on its way, big trouble. So I leaped up and ran over to a guy on a BMW chopper. God, that company's doing well. Gave him an elbow in the face, jumped on and gunned the motor and got the hell out of there. In my rear view mirror, I saw the explosion. Cars flying everywhere, end over end, like in those $50 million action movies they had back in the 21st century. Wait, this was the 21st century and I was in it. I had to catch up with that bomber on his motorcycle. I weaved left and right around the cars until there he was up ahead. Hey, slow down, I shouted. I can't catch up. But the guy ignored me and kept going. Luckily, my last assignment had been in the Old West, and I developed some skills there. I pulled out the lariat I keep in my backpack. I told you I had a backpack, right? No, don't leaf back through the book. The part about the backpack is probably gone. This book is written in ephemeral script from Ephematech, a 26th century firm, and the contents are constantly changing, morphing as you read it. Picture the primordial nothingness just before the Big Bang. What you're holding is a lot like that. Back to the lariat. I whipped it out and hurled it unerringly at the biker. It dropped over his head and I pulled hard, jerking him off his, yes, another BMW bike. I'd strongly recommend BMW at its current valuation and anticipate robust growth in earnings in the next quarter, except who knows what quarter you're in. Down he went on the pavement and I flew past to drag him behind me for a few blocks to teach him a lesson. but. I could see in my rearview mirror he had kept his feet and was actually running behind me, holding onto the rope. This was impossible. Now he was pulling back on my bike, slowing me down. Who was this guy? When he got me slowed way down, I jumped off the bike to face him, tying the rope to my bike handle. That was when he started whirling my motorcycle around in the air in big circles as oncoming traffic veered off or screeched to a stop. This was turning into a hell of an assignment. Ever feel nostalgic for the future? That was me. But I couldn't cut and run. There was too much at stake. Lori, Manny Peril, my BMW shares, and the Starbucks coffee shop behind me. That whirling bike was getting too close to the cappuccinos for my taste. That's when it hit me. I needed a cup of coffee right now. I turned and headed for the door. That's when it hit me. The bike, that is. He was good. He just grazed my temple with the front tire. I went out like a light.